take a map of Queensland, stick a pin right in the centre and what you hit, you hit this place. It's Longreach and it has a surprising number of historical claims to fame which we're about to show you. First thing you need to know is that Longreach is right here on the Tropic of Capricorn, so we're in the temperate zone here. Over the line, we're in the tropics, much warmer. <laughs> Close to 5,000 people call Longreach their home. Among them, Richard Kinnan, who today is taking his replica Cobb & Co coach through town. A century ago, Cobb & Co coaches carried passengers all over Queensland. It would take a week of hard riding to travel here from Brisbane. But today, Richard's two coach horses, Joe and Flo, are more content to be ridden through and around town. Longreach also pays tribute to the pioneers of the Australian outback, and this, the Stockman's Hall of Fame. Super modern on the outside, but step inside and you're taking a real trip back in time. There's the transport of yesteryear, the communications, artefacts from their worksheds and busts of some of the heroes of the outback. And what about this water cart, made by John Furphy and Company? Furphy has since become Australian slang for rumour or improbable, and that's because Aussie soldiers during World War I would gather around these water carts and exchange gossip. Six million dollars has gone into refurbishing the buildings and exhibits, recreating and interpreting the story of outback life. And out the back of the museum, a modern day legend of the outback. Introducing Rusty Frame. Yep, that's his name. And here he is, large as life, going through the kind of chores you'd expect of a bushy. All to the delight of visitors to the Stockman's Hall of Fame. There are sheep and sheepdogs and reluctant horses. But it's Rusty himself who embodies the spirit of the outback. Oh, the outback, it's a fantastic place to be. It's wonderful to live out here. I tell you, there's, uh, I, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Wide open spaces, friendly, friendly people. Out here, we don't have droughts, we have dry times. Um, we we accept, accept those sort of conditions and, and, and that's the part that we love about it and the people expect it and love it. Uh, my main reason for loving the outback is it's God's country. We might be rough, but, but we're loving people, you know, and, and uh, there's not one, one person out here in, in the outback that, that wouldn't shake your hand, give you a bed, give you a feed if you're hungry, you know, and, and not want any money for it. Well, I've been everything from a kid droving as a child with my grandfather who was a drover all his life, uh, every school holidays, every opportunity, every weekend I'd get out with him. He'd always have a pony for me to, to ride. I'd get out there if I couldn't. When I couldn't get to him, I used to go to an old family friend of mine down uh, near where I was born, Chinchilla, and um, he had a property there called Rocky Bay. His name was Reg Williams. And um, I'd go out there and spend my holidays with RM and, and we'd muster and drove and, and do things together out there with his family and as a part of the working team. When I did spend my, some of my younger days with, with, with Reg Williams, RM Williams, um, that was, he was a great mentor to me, you know. He taught me a lot of things, like even today, I still suck a, a gum leaf while I'm mustering. And what that does, it stops your lips getting sunburned. So that's something, just one little thing that RM taught me that, that um, you know, I, I still do today and, and, and there's a good reason for it. You know, he was a smart man. There'll always be stockmen in, out here, there always will be. While you've got sheep, while you've got cattle, while there's goats, while there's any animal, there'll always be stockmen. And, and I just want to be part of it until, until the toes curl up, I suppose. <laughs> Of all Longreach's claims to fame, it's this shed that steals the show. Back in 1922, this was the headquarters for the Queensland and Northern Territory Aerial Service, an airline we know today as Qantas. So the original hangar still stands, part now of a $16 million Qantas museum here, managed by Colin Woodford. The showpiece of the museum is this hangar that we're standing in, which is the original 1922 hangar. Um, and it was in this hangar that the, uh, the operation started and we actually built um, seven aircraft um, in this and certainly replicas of the methods in which they uh, manufactured those aircraft are still here. 
It was interesting to note that the reason that they had to make their own aeroplanes here is because no aeroplanes that were being built anywhere else at that time were capable and powerful enough to operate under the very hot air conditions here in the outback. On display, a perfect replica of Qantas's first plane, the Avro 504K. Earlier models of these biplanes were used to drop bombs in the First World War, but peacetime 1922 saw the original Qantas model fly passengers and mail from Charleville to Cloncurry in Queensland. Outside, there's a DC-3, first flown by the Australian Air Force in World War II and later operated by Qantas Empire Airways right up to 1960. And here's Qantas's first jet a Boeing 707 which flew the Sydney to London route from 1959 to the early 70s. But by far the largest of the collection is this jumbo jet, destined never to take off again from Longreach because the runway is too short. Now here's a real world first. This fully functional Qantas 747 is parked here on the edges of Longreach Airport and they have allowed passengers to walk from one end of the wing to the other. It's a real must do. I'm rushing to meet my guide, Margie Elliott. Well, what a treat. And we can we can jump on the wing, can we? we and can we can jump. You want to run, jump, you feel run. like running, okay. you want to run right out here. I feel like a big kid out here. <laughs> this is a world first, isn't it? Yes, nowhere else in the world can you walk on the wing of a 747. The plane's 60 metres wide from one tip wing to the other one. 70 metres long and 90 metres high to the tip of the tail. Your wing is designed to flex up to 20 feet, it does go further, but um, on takeoff and landing, she's going to be as high as the top of the plane. We can jump together and you'll see the tip of the wing moving. <laughs> now look, you see it move a bit, go again. <laughs> okay, definite You move did have a big there. breakfast. <laughs> Normally they need a strip around 11,000 feet long, 60 metres wide. This strip is 6,000 feet long and 30 metres wide. So they reduced the, uh, the weight of the plane. Uh, it went from 387 tonne back to 176 tonne and that uh, lightened it up enough so the tarmac could handle that weight and it could pull up in enough time. Wow. Now they've got it down but of course this airstrip is not long enough to take off. This so plane is here forever. It's going to stay here and we're pretty happy to have it in our backyard. <laughs> <laughs> And tell me, you've had all sorts of interesting things happen out here. Somebody proposed? Absolutely. The proposal would have had to take in the cake, I'd say. It was uh, in November, so it would have been nice in the 40s degrees. And this fellow came out here all done up in his pilot's outfit, got down his knee and did the whole romantic proposal. She did accept, otherwise he was going to push her off the edge, probably. <laughs> On the outskirts of town, the waterway that has given Longreach its name, a long reach of the Thompson River. As we cruise past its Coolabar trees, local entertainers Lee and Grant Miller give us their rendition of Australia's most endearing ballad. In our next episode, we'll feature another rendition of Waltzing Matilda, this time from the very billabong that inspired its balladeer, Banjo Patterson. <laughs>